chapter 11 verse 6. John chapter 20 verses, verses 29. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 14. And Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. Isaiah 14, 12, 12 to 14. Everybody have that? Those who are writing, okay? Now, what is prayer? Anybody? Now remember we, even though I'm bringing the word, we are interacting with each other. So you can answer at when, I, when the question is asked. What is prayer? Anybody can tell me? Talking to God. Talking to God. There are many, there are many um, things that can identify prayer. Well, when we say we have a prayer, we are having a fellowship. We are having Christ in it. Okay? So prayer represents Christ. So we are Christ in it. Now it says that prayer has the power to ignite any dynamite. Anything that seems red hot in our lives. As Christians, prayer has the power to, to blow it up or to ignite it. Now we have prayer because we want whatever we, we talk to God with or go to God with that we want to get an answer. Now, prayer, it is not getting you to do God's will or not for God to do your will. Okay, let me say that again. Prayer is getting you and me to do God's will, not for God to do his will in our life. Okay? If you understand, it is saying that it is not sending God on an errand for us then. We are not sending God to go do this for us or go do that for us. Many times we say that we pray to God about it. As we heard that the sister said, she was praying to God for a job. And God bless her. Okay? God alone knows the heart. He alone searches the heart. And you can pray maybe 10, 15, 20 years and nothing is happening. But one day, something happened that you really went down on your knees. Hallelujah. And you go to God in prayer. You cry out to God and God heard that prayer. Amen. And God answered that prayer. So that's when your victory came. Hallelujah. Your victory came when God see the sincerity of the heart. Yes, and he wants us to be sincere mm -hmm. um, with him. Prayer is a key to stay faithful with God. Many times we go through things in our lives. You and I have different issues. We have different things handling in our lives that we cannot make anything happen but only God. God alone can make us understand who he really is. God places us in place where we need to bend down and cry out to him. When we have prayer, we have a conversation with God. So when you go and kneel or when you go on your bed and lie and say, I go to pray, it's not just going to speak to yourself, but it's having conversation with the Lord. Because why? During that time, there is guidance. There is a direction, and at that time you are focused. You are really focused on God. So when think about it, when you go and say you want to pray or you're going to pray, you are not going just to babble a few words, but you're going to have a conversation with God. Because that's the only time we, most of us keep focused on God. Now I mentioned before there are many pitfalls to pray. Let us see if we can identify them in our lives and fight back. Let us see if we can say to ourselves, oh yes, I've really experienced such thing in my life. Prayer, when you 
when there is a roadblock to prayer, it means that you are lacking in faith. You are lacking in faith. And you can see that in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says that faith deters the anxiety that occurs as we live and struggle with certain things in our life that we cannot handle ourselves. When you lack faith, you doubt. Okay? You doubt. Like the disciples. The disciples in Matthew 14, 25 and 31, they doubted. They didn't show any faith in the Lord. And so they had some struggles. It says that when we are struggling in situations, it means that most times we tend to doubt and go on one side for ourselves. Focus on God and going to God sincerely builds our faith. So if you do not have that, if you do not focus, you are lacking. You are lacking in faith and things cannot work out for you. Jesus tells his disciples in John 20, 29. He told them, he said those words to them. He said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So, if you do not believe in God, you do not have faith. Because faith only comes through believing in God's word. It says that you need to allow God to control or to take care of the worldly affairs around you. In faith, so that you wouldn't get caught up or drawn away by the worldly affairs. It says that in John 20, 29, that as Jesus said, blessed are those who not seen and yet believe. It is telling us that if you believe in God, that your faith would be strong. Your faith would be strong in God. So stop doubting. Stop ifing and butting. Stop wondering if Right now, some of us come and we sit here. You might be looking my direction, but I do not know what you are thinking about. Maybe you leave home with some something happening, and it's something that you cannot correct for yourself, but only trust in God. We need to drop all those things, clear our minds, and focus on God. Stop practicing faith in God. Amen. The next pitfall of roadblocks in our prayer is pride and selfishness. Am I speaking to myself? <laughs> or am I speaking to our brothers and sisters who struggle every day? Right. Pride and selfishness. When you look in Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, it says that pride is one of the most biggest roadblocks to pray. Okay? We begin to think we can do everything for ourselves and, and live a lifestyle that we feel it is my life and I can do what I want. Do you know that your life does not belong to you? God knows you it for a certain time and in the word he said, if you pass 17, you are blessed. If you pass 70 years old, you are blessed because the cutoff line is 70. But when you live 70, 75, 70, 80, whatever, you are blessed. God allow you to have those life, to enjoy life. You need to surrender to God. You can be up there and still want God to meet your need. You, you are not higher. I am not higher than God. We have to depend on God to meet our needs. And when you full of pride, I am not doing this. Now, for example, I would, I would go at my sister again that said she was praying for 
a job. Maybe she was looking for a particular job, something that she would like to do, or something, you know, that, as we say, that have the money in it. Okay? And our pastor had trying to help her, looking somewhere to see where he can find a job for her. And he, would, he might say to her, you know, there is a, a old woman down there who needs some uh, old clothes or work clothes to wash and, or she needs a house to clean out or she needs something or a side road, the water is coming in and blocking so she needs someone to clear out, just get a, a hoe and clear out the way so that the water can run. And you, you might say to yourself, me? Not me here yeah, talking to me. <laughs> That is not my job. That is not what I want. You know? And you, you just make some excuse to say, you know, I can't really do that because my back or my hand or something is wrong. All the time you don't want to tell him, I ain't doing that. You know, pride. All right? But it, say, it says that God soon finds us out in everything because he knows our thoughts even before we think about it. So it says that we have to be very careful. Like Lucifer the devil. Lucifer was very proud. He was very selfish. You know, God created him and gave him such nice place together with him. But you know what happened? He wasn't satisfied. He wanted to take over. He wanted to go against God. So he made all his plans and he did not surrender his life to, to, to God because he wants to get above them. So he made his plans and he tried all. He tried to see how he can get above God. But you know what happened? He ended up where he, where he wasn't expected to go he ended up in hell. So that's where he is right now. And we don't want to go there to join him. No. We don't want to use our selfishness and our pride to go to join the devil. That is not where our place is. He made some strong words to God and he said, um, he, he even went to Jesus and told Jesus, you know, if you know you, the son of God, cast these stones into bread and all those sort of things. No, someone created you and you want to go and tell them what they should do. You know, it has people like us today just like that. You know, you try to help them, you try to lead them the right way. And after they feel that they get somewhere or they don't need your help anymore, they, they want to tell you that you should be doing this or you should be doing that. No gratitude or no thanks at all. Now in John 15 and verse 5 to 7. John 15 verse 5 to 7 says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. God is the vine, we are the branches. We live by his strength. Our veins and our blood run in Christ. We cannot go and do as we like. Our dependence on God increases as we commune with Him. The next pitfall to roadblocks in our prayer is our impatientness. Very impatient. Now can any one of you here tell me or say to me a time when you were very impatient. Any anyone? No, I have seen many and I've heard many people, even me myself, sometimes be impatient. You know, just this month. Um, just this last month, many of us was impatient because of what? No electricity. No light. 
verse 1 warns us to wait patiently on the Lord. When we pray honestly to God, He answers our prayer. But there are many times when we want Him to follow our own timetable. When you go to God in prayer, you do not sit and make up your own timetable so that the Lord could, um, could answer your prayer to do something for you. It is that when we sit and ask God to help us to stop having that sort of attitude, impatientness, that God can walk through us. He can make things happen in our lives. We have to be patient. When we go to the, the, the polyclinic, for example, they give nearly every patient the same time, 9.30, 8.30, 10.30, 12.30, give you that time. And you go on to the polyclinic or to the doctor and you decide, well, I have a 10.30 appointment, so I go in, I go in there um, 10.25, so when I go, I will get in. And then you stay, have to sit another two, three, four hours before your name call or a number call. And you start, man, I was here so long. I have this appointment. And now, look at what happened. I can't even see the doctor. Impatientness. The doctor is only one man or one woman. The nurses are one. They, they try to help. They have issues and problems too. When they come to work at the polyclinic, they, most of the time they are full with problems. Even they themselves are impatient. Because sometimes uh, the way they would answer the patient or say things to the patient, you can know that they are impatient. They do not have any patience with you. So we have to we have to stop using our own timetable. Mary and Martha was trying to to do that, but when God gave them the answer in John eleven. 21 and 22. When he gave her the answer, she didn't like it. Because when she went to him and said, Master, look, I hear doing all the work in the kitchen and all the work in the house, and look, um, Mary just sitting at your feet or whatever it is. And he told her that Mary was doing the right thing. She was there with the master trying to learn and listen to, to him, but um, Martha was impatient. She couldn't, she couldn't understand why it is I alone there doing all the work and, and um, my young sister sitting at Jesus' feet. But we need sometimes to drop our daily chores, drop the things that we are doing and focus on God. And that is what um, Mary was doing. She was focusing on God, but Martha was focusing and having the place clean, having the meals prepared, and having certain things. God is not interested in your clean house or your nice meal. He's interested in the whole human being, how you feel and what he wants you to do. We need to understand that God works through people. He uses me and he uses you. There are times when we do things and then we say, I didn't know that it would have happened so. I didn't know that it would come out like that. Right? God uses people to make his work go ahead. So if you think that you are the only one that God uses, you are wrong. God uses everyone in certain circumstances to help each other. Now we are saying there are angels around us. There are a lot of angels around us who God uses to do his work. And we can only experience that when we understand who God is and who he is in our lives. Another hindrance, another barricade that affects us in our prayer is laziness. Okay? Laziness. Prayer is active, not passive. <laughs> if you are spiritually lazy, 
Now you can be physically, you know, energized or eager to do things, but spiritually you are lazy. Meaning that you you don't even want to spend maybe five good minutes on your knees or maybe nowadays we don't kneel down, we lie down on our bed or whatever it is and pray to God. Right? Sometimes we don't even have that time or we don't make ourselves available to enter God's presence. We need to spend time, we need to spend energy, we need to go by what God wants us to do. Now prayer is joy and communion with God. Now if you do not have joy and communion with God, you are lazy. You are spiritually lazy. You have to have joy to consider that God is your father, he's your provider, he's your source, and that it's only him that you can depend on. Then we will get a reasonable, a, a, a passionate response. Laziness and indifference can lead us into a bad situation. You cannot just want to say, Amen, Hallelujah, God help me, God bless me, and especially every morning you get up, Lord bless my house, bless my children, bless my husband, bless this, and you don't even say, Lord, I pray for my neighbor, I pray for my friend, I pray for this church member. You know, you, you got to have your mind active, not dead, active, so that you can walk on what God wants you to do. Now, the next roadblock to prayer is no time to pray. No time to pray. We pray on Sunday when we come to church. But from Monday to next Sunday, we don't have any time. We, we busy, we have to go to work, we have to wash, we have to do this before the rain comes down. We have to go and get that before this happens. Many times we get, leave our beds and we do not even say thank you, Lord. Prayer is so important. Sometimes we, we find ourselves doing more and praying less. Doing all the housework. Sometimes it, it happened to me, but when I realized that, no, this is not it, because if it was God, I would not have, um, have the strength to, to work or do what I have to do. So most times, I will drop what I am doing and say, let me go before God. Let me go and have communion with God. Working at home, a husband or children or grandchildren, some grandparents, um, what you never do with your children, you do with your grand. You allow them to rule your life, to have your whole life take over. And we need to put things in perspective. Yes, you have a grandchildren, you love your grandchildren, you love your children, whatever it is. But who loves you more? God loves you more. And he is the one you're supposed to spend time with. He is the one that you're supposed to pray and talk with, having communion with him, having fellowship. When you pray to God and you, you, you pray to God, you cry out your heart, you, whatever. You are having that fellowship with God. He understands. He feels your pain. He understands your situation. There is nothing that happened to us in our life that God do not understand. Many times we feel that, why me? Why this? Why God do this? Especially if, God, if a child of us died that we love very well. We, we question God. God, why you do this? Why that happened to me? God knows and he might be shielding you from some problems to come in later time. So when things happen to us in our lives and we go out to have fellowship with God, yes, you can question God. He likes us to question. He knows what you would ask him, but he still wants us to question him. And you ask him, but you do not act as though that you, he should answer everything that you want. No, you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to do whatever. You do as you like. Something happened in your family. Something happened to you. And then the first thing you want God give you.
you the answer. You want your prayers to be answered. It don't work so with God. Find time to pray. Even though you, you take 10 minutes, some of us don't have anything to do. Yeah, we might have a little house cleaning or whatever to do. Some of us don't have to get up and run to go to work or whatever. But even though you have to go to work, always practice to spend at least 10 minutes or 5 minutes reading the word and praying and having fellowship with God before you leave home. Because when you step out there, you don't know if you will be able to come back in the home. Everybody see what is happening these days. You leave home and you do not know if you will get back home. So much things happening. This world is a wicked world. God made a good world, but we turn it wicked. We turn it to our own selfishness, what things that we want. But we have to find time to pray. Another roadblock to our prayer is hypocrisy. We sit and we talk and we judge and we assume many things. We assume, oh, the pastor need nothing, look at how he looks. And that's what we we uh, think. I remember a sister told me a time, she came to me and she said, Sister, you don't need nothing, you know, look how nice you're looking. She said, you're, you're glowing. And do you know at that time when she told me so I was really done and all? <laughs> yes, things real tight. But when she told me so, I turned and I said, you know something? To myself, I said, you're talking, but you ain't know, why you ain't give me a hundred dollars? <laughs> So, you know, we look at people and we assume that they don't need, they don't want. You don't look at how a person dresses, or how a person walk, or how a person talk, or where a person lives in. That's, that's how we judge people. By the looks, where they live, or the work. And sometimes, the people we are judging in that way, Lord, they need the Lord more than us. We are 100% happy and blessed. Even though we are living in, in a, as we don't say, one by one, we are blessed, we are happy, and we tend to judge people. A lifestyle that formed by prayer is a life opposed to illusion and self-deception. You, you have to sit down and understand that if you continue to talk and to gossip about somebody, the time you lose to gossip or to talk, that time could be spent in talking to God, asking God to change you. You know, give you a clean, a clean heart and a pure heart. You know, we are, as we said, we live in a world that is dangerous. Every day we sin. Every day something comes into our presence and causes us to sin. So we have to ask the Lord for continued cleansing. Because I tell you, we, we talk about the three men that cut up one another and kill one another. But if some of us is in certain times get the chance, most of us would have done that sometime or somehow. If you don't have God in your life. You need to have God in your life. You need to ask God to come into your life and to help you. Stop being pious. Stop being, you know, appearing to be all that righteous. All that good, you know. We have problems today, especially in churches. I spent how many years in churches, and I understand that, you know, yes, God wants you to talk to him. He wants you to tell him everything. But the long, outrageous prayer does not really catch the heart of God. It's when you are humble. When you are humble and sincere. I remember I was a, the president of the Diabetic Association. And there was a man there that he attended the clinic. And every time the man comes to the clinic and we have to start in opening prayer, he wants to pray. And when he starts, he would use words like, Lord, enthusiastically, humorously, and, and force me 
radically, and you know, all kind of word he used. Word that does not even suit the, the, the prayer, as I would say. All kind of word. Trying to impress by using big words. And at that time, the people get set up with him because every time he comes, he hands up, you want to pray. Other people want to pray too. But he wants to use his big, elaborate words that you don't even find in the dictionary. You can't even find it in the dictionary. So this um, piousness and um, look, look pious and come out, your parents, you are so holy that nobody else can pray like you or teach like you or speak like you or those sort of things. God is not interested in those things. He's interested in the heart. He's interested in what he wants you to do. So we in Matthew 23, chapter 23 and verse 25 to 28, he said that we as Christians, we have to become a living temple. A living temple. Our body is a living temple of the Lord. Let us stop using our bodies as though we make ourselves. This, as we say, this shell that is standing here is all earthly that God, heavenly spirit, is in. So we need to cleanse the earthly part so that the spiritual part would, would stay in. We need to understand that our life that we live have to be a clean temple. You can't be at the dance hall and still want to be at the church. We find that many times in, in different churches that I...